Right, so you want to make an instrumental in the style of Central C and Dave's Sprinter. That's what we're going to break down in this video. I want to be clear right from the offset here, this is not a beat remake. I've had enough copyright strikes already. We're actually going to make the sample rather than just download something from Splice, which is the easy way. And I want you to really understand why this BPM works and this drum structure works, as well as this really kind of weird offbeat bass pattern that works with that big heavy kick drum to make the bass line work. Once we understand how all those things like come together and synergize, it's really easy to kind of build this kind of beat idea up. I use a little bit of silence, a little bit of breakdown, pitching with the hats and things like that. All these little nuanced things bring it all together. Together. Let's get right into it, shall we? All right, so here's the little loop we've got starting off um, from the fly. I want to show you how we built it up and what we're going to do to it. So first things first, grab this little guy just here and to take this down a different route instead of using a kind of vintage sample. The one used in Sprinter gives that kind of scar face feel, kind of like a Latino guitar and then it's chopped and screwed just a little bit. We're going to do something similar, but again, I ain't making a remake. So what we've done is just made this. So it's the same thing, but gives us two different melodies and two different vibes. And I've just used it as a sample to run throughout the track. Next, we'll look at the two kicks that we've got here. So both of these kicks are made in a synth. And the first one very simply does this. And that's there really to help create the bass line. So it's got that punch and then a long whoom, tail of it. And that is our bass note. And that's a key part of how this kind of beat works. There's another kick that then layers on top of it. So together they're like this. Kind of weird, right? We take off the whoom one. It's just this distorted little hit. One does the percussive element, one does the bass. We've then got two snare layers. One's really, really simple. It's, it says heavy kick. It's a distorted rim snare. And then we've chopped another part out of a break. I used a break that was in Logic by default called rim shot rim break because, well, we needed a rim shot and this kind of worked. I've just cut it really, really short, look, really, really tight and giving it a fade off at the end. Now the two work together to give you this vibe. Now they sound kind of like offbeat and wonky, like one's like katuka, katuka. It works in the track. On their own, it sounds a little odd, but what that does is it helps give a little swing to the whole track because we're only going kick. Then we've got four snare hits before we've got a kick again. And that little helps everything swing along. You'll see when I put the hats in in a second and we'll look at how we make that work. So with the kicks and the snare. Right, now the hats, again, I've taken this from a just a default loop that was in Logic. It says it's called a round midnight hi-hat. Um, and all it is is some left and right hi-hats and some pitching going on to make it sound like this. It's just the same thing, rolls over and over and over. And it's all just the same hi-hat, just chopped up and pitched. And then here we've got some left and right panning going on. So when that comes in with the snare, they've got a real rhythm together that ebbs and flows and swings because we've got that thing going on with the snare, right? Here we go. And that all just gets accented by the kick that lands on every other bar. And that's, that's it, that's all we're really doing there. So let's break down how these all make sense for the most part. The bassy kick here, we're just gonna load up the synth here. The big thing about this is the decay here. That's what really makes the sound. Everything else, shape it as you like. The decay here, I've got it set to what, 56.1. That's what makes it work. If we take it back to like 18. Just kind of sucks now, doesn't it? Jack it right back up to that 56 range though. Now it's part of the baseline, right? It brings everything through. Alternatively, there's an EQ on it. There's no real highs in there. You can just see it's this wave of low end. The other one, 
as you can see, is the opposite. We've got a really, really tight decay and, and a bit of saturation. It's just boom. And that just gives us all of the perk to come through in the kit, it gives us all the punch. There's no extreme low end, so nothing below the 80 mark. And if we look in here, we can just see it's that punch through and then all of its harmonics coming down here. And that's why the two of those work together the way they do. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. Now we're gonna zoom in a bit here for the snares because the secret source to them is actually the fact that they're not quite in rhythm. Our key counts where we would have one, two, three, four. We're going one and two and three and boom. There's our first snare. It's landing on the and. Like traditional hip hop drum pattern, you're gonna go one, two, three, four. Your snare's gonna land on the two and on the four. This, we're in the and, we're right in between. It's off rhythm straight away. And that comes in with the fact that we're working in quite a high BPM. We're up at 139, but we're working even in less than half time, to be honest, we're really slow and off that pattern. So the fact it's sitting there on the and just kind of leads you off a bit. You get that kick and then you're expecting the snare to land somewhere else and it lands in this and in between beats. That gives you kind of that, oh, feel. And that's why the second snare coming in works so well. And that's delayed a little bit. Look, the second snare, that's landing kind of right where we think it would, right on the beat, but it's delayed just a little bit. And this is where they're kind of flamming a little bit and just having a bit of rhythm. And the hi-hat lands right in there and then the snare's a bit delayed. So it's kind of how much you decide that to be off is completely up to you, but that's what worked in this beat here. So we've got. It all feels right, but it's right on the and it's not in the rhythm it would be. It's like a traditional beat, for example, would have the snare landing here and this one wouldn't be there at all. So we can meet those. It would be like this. But in this instance, that feels proper rigid and square, doesn't it? What you'd end up doing is putting another kick in between it like this. And then we'd have to slow the BPM right down for that to work. So we get rid of this. This all sits in this range instead. And because we're up at 139, garage, dubstep tempo, it works really, really well. Now the second bar, we don't even have a kick. We just wire out a bit with the hats and let those snares roll. So we've got all of that happening before we get our kick background. Now the hats as well play a, a little trick as well in that we're going in and out of the beat. So here we're landing on the one, here would be the two, here would be the three, here would be the and, but we're landing on a 16th, which is in between the, one, the beat and the and, right? So we're kind of giving that push pull straight away. Duh, 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 duh. And then just really quick 16th here, but listen, pitching down these two afterwards. It's really easy to do in Logic. You can grab any sample, go to the inspector over here, uh, and we can literally just like pull it down with either a transpose, like one or two, or we can do it with fine tune if you want to be really, really narrow. So now we could do more extreme. We can play around with that kind of idea as well. When we've got these left and right hats here, let's split them up again. So I can just uh, hit the slice to all hold option and just chop them like that super, super quick. What I could do here is play around with how these sit in terms of their pitch as well. I could transpose one up, one back down. And it's all just ear candy that picks up the ear because there's loads of space going on the track. There's not another kick happening for a while. We've got the double snare. It's just those hats riding through. So we can really play around with them, stick them over here, stick them over here, pitch them up, pitch them down, tell a story with them. And we're doing everything on 16th so we can play in between those beats as well because we've got all the room to do that. We don't have to be that really rigid like t -t 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 -t. 
It can go all over the place, ebb and flow, as long as we land somewhere in time with that snare pattern, it's gonna work really well. And this is the pattern we're working with here. And the beat's pretty covered up in Sprinter, but I'm pretty sure this is round about what we've got. So that's it for drums. That's the breakdown for them. It's very, very simple to do. The thing that juxtaposes super nicely with this kick, and it doesn't happen until later in the track, but we can just do it here, is we have bass notes that happen before the kick drum, and they then become part of the beat. So here we go. Really, really simple. So there's still nothing happening in all this space here, but right here before the kick comes on the beat, boom, into the kick drum and just gives it that boom, boom, making it more like a bass line. And then here, the same trick that's happening with the hi-hats and make it feel like the pace is going up. It's just happening on the beat, leaving the space and then coming into that kick drum again here. And then later, there's little bits of bass line that start to creep in in between before we end up resetting the whole beat. So here's that with more context of the bass line and it just drops down along the octave basically. And then here, right at the end of what would be the 16 bars, we just take everything out. And this is where we've just got like the key phrases from the vocalist come in. It's just hi-hats ticking along, nothing else really going on. Even drop the sample out here or pitch the sample down. We'll look at doing that in a sec. And that's it, just let that roll out and then it resets again. Because you've taken everything away when the kick lands, it feels massive again. So and then boom, right back in. So that's all there is to the beat, rhythm and the bass. So all it is now, from here is having the sample on top of it as well. So here we go, just the whole thing in context. So let's have a look at some things we could do with the sample to really mix that up a little bit as well. So I want you guys to be able to download this project and you might not have whatever guitar plugin I've used in complete here. So let's render this out to audio. What I can do here is just right click on this guy, bounce in place, look, and we'll call it guitar because we're really imaginative over here. Uh, new track, live, 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 I love production only, boom, there we go. Happy day, so now we have a sample, we can mute you, leave you up there. So let's have a little look at something we could do here. If we were to put it right at the end here, I mentioned like using a little dropout fade. So there's something nifty I can do here in Logic. If I bring the sample end, so it's just like that, and it ends with the track, like that over the four bars. We'll copy this one over here so we're not copying the same thing. In Inspector again, I can drop down into more. I've got fade out here, so I can do audio fades by going up here and fading out. I can switch that audio fade down to a slowdown. And what we'll do is we'll bring it back. So we've just got, say, the quarter, so beat one into beat two, and then it's gone. We'll have that as a slowdown there. It just gives that little like ear candy, a little bit of flick for something to go on. We like it. So there's a couple of tools. If you're using FL Studio, you can use Gross Beat, Chop, Pitch, and absolutely mash this up. Or there is a plugin that I like to use from Melda. Pretty sure it's a paid one, but I've had it for years. I'm um, called the M Rhythmizer. We can do things like that. And mess around with the timing of it. And there, that's gonna let us repeat the same section over and over and over like that. We can mix the wet and dry and have them run together. 
And that kind of like chopping technique there that ebbs and flows, that's what you hear in Sprinter with the guitar where they've like ebbed it, chopped it, pitched it down. My guess it would be gross beat the way it operates, but could be anything. And you can do it with audio as well. It's just hard work. So we could automate it to go between a few different ones over the course of the track. All right, so we've used M Rhythmizer just to make a couple of little stutters, bounced it to audio so you guys can download it. All it does is change the patch on here to do different stutters. So it's like this. That's it, it gives us some little repeats and variation in the pattern. Again, in case you don't have that, that little pattern is bounced out just here now. So we can just mute those two out like so. That's a little flex. Something else I'd like to do is just here, I wanna make use of one of these hi-hats. And we're gonna go over into Inspector and hit reverse. And I'm just gonna have a little reverse in after that stutter happens just there, just to kind of like blend the two in the middle here. So we be like this. Yeah. And that is essentially it. If you wanna see more tracks produced in a particular style and how you go about creating those drum patterns and getting that kind of track vibe, leave it in the comments down below. If I listen to it and I enjoy it, that will be the key factor deciding whether or not I dive into it. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you wanna see more tutorials on things like this, check out this video right here next. And I will see you in that one. Take care.